Union members are getting older. Well, we're all getting older, but our whole movement is ageing. Look at this. If you break down Union members into age groups, you can see where this is heading. 14% of the UK workforce is currently under 24, yet they only make up 4.7% of Union members. We have much higher membership in the older groups, sure, but what happens as members now in their 50s start their well-deserved retirement? We just aren't bringing in enough younger members. Not enough to fill the gap left by our retiring members. It gets even more worrying if you look at the backbone of our movement, our reps and activists. The union movement relies on tens of thousands of committed activists up and down the country. They organise their workplaces, represent members and recruit new workers to the union. But the age profile of our reps is even older. We have some amazing younger activists, but far too few of them. Of course, some young workers do join unions, particularly if they are working in unionised professions or workplaces, but they are very much the minority. So why aren't younger people joining unions? It's certainly not because everything at work is going great for them. Over the last year, the TUC has listened to more than 100 young private sector workers tell us about work. Here's some of what they said. The managers in my job are usually quite fair with everyone, unless you're not liked by them, and then they can be quite difficult and not help you out with things that you need to help him with or sort in. If someone's a minute late to work, which I'm not, but if someone is a minute late to work, um, it's a whole form they have to fill out for another 25 minutes when they get there, sign it, understand it, and then there's a disciplinary if they have three of those within three months. Um, whereas when it comes to letting us out at the end of the day, they can keep us half an hour to an hour to an hour and a half over the time that's actually agreed on the road to us. What that tells us is that we need to do more to make trade unions make sense to them. There's no doubt that they need unions, but we found three key barriers stopping young workers organising together to improve things. Number one, young workers might be unhappy about their work, but for too many, they don't expect any better. All too often we heard things like, my boss lets me swap shifts sometimes, so I guess I can't complain too much when I have to stay late without pay. Union members know that things don't have to be that way but too many young workers think there's no choice but to go along with it. Number two, workers are isolated and disconnected from their colleagues. Insecure work and no time to build relationships with colleagues means there's little sense of trust. Young workers are worried that their colleagues will tell on them if they complain about the manager. Without trust, they can't tackle problems together. Number three, Young workers told us that whenever they have tried to change things alone, they've failed. That creates a strong sense of futility. Too many young workers just see the risk and the price tag of joining a union. They don't have any faith that things can change. The union movement's values have kept us strong for over a century. Times change, but our values remain. If we want to reach these young people, we'll have to change how we do things. That means the whole movement getting behind brilliant campaigns in workplaces where there are lots of younger workers, like at Ritzy Cinemas and Sports Direct. But we also need to think about trying new things to break down the barriers between younger workers and unions. We can't just keep saying the same things louder and expect them to work. We're looking for anything that works in getting younger workers on a path towards unions, so we're keeping an open mind. There isn't a magic fix. There's no one change that will solve all our problems and make everyone join up. We need to take younger workers on a journey. Sometimes that might mean doing things that don't immediately look like a union, but we'll need to do them first to get people thinking about the power they could have by working together. It's all part of a journey with trade unions as the destination. And we're going to be determined about this. We'll keep listening to young workers. We'll listen to their ideas, test, learn, modify and test again. If we find things that work, we'll scale them up. If we find things that don't work, we'll chuck them out. Many of the tactics we'll need will be digital. That's how younger workers expect to interact with us and each other. 
we'll meet them where they are. Looking for what gets people to click, online and with each other. By next Congress, we hope to have a clear strategy to make sure young workers can get the benefits of trade unions. And we're going to need your help. Once the pilot project's results are in, we'll need the whole movement to get on board. We're a movement of millions, but there are millions more who need a better deal at work for many years to come. Young workers need trade unions more than ever, and our movement needs young workers.